Hello, investors, and welcome back, Proterra community. Before we get into a Proterra update, I just wanted to say to those of you that are impacted either directly or indirectly by the crisis that's happening between Russia and Ukraine, hearts and prayers out to each and every one of you. I was watching a lot of what was coming out last night. Now, during this video, we're going to talk about Proterra, the update, but also the crisis, because of course, this is a macroeconomic indicator. It isn't causing a market crash, but are we in a bear market? So I was on Twitter and I found this photo that really described how I feel about this Russia launch of this full-scale invasion on Ukraine. And if you're looking to keep up with what's going on, just be aware that there may be misinformation out there. For example, this was taken and posted in my local community here in Atlanta, Georgia. There are rail cars of tanks and this is how they transport these for reservists and operations around here. But you can, of course, see how they're relating what typically happens with military bases and how they transport these vehicles locally with what's happening with the conflict over in Europe. Now, we've got enough equipment over there. Is there a potential that we're sending additional tanks? I mean, the president's supposed to speak today. I would make sure that you're just open-minded to know that there is misinformation out there. That's the whole reason I started this Proterra channel is because that this was a stock that was just beaten down by misinformation. Now, Biden has been presented with options for massive cyber attacks in Russia, and Unusual Wells has come out with tweet after tweet and kept up with the conflict pretty well. But I will tell you in here, if it's not documented, there is a chance that there might be some misinformation with how frequently and how quickly information is coming out. But I will say that the Russian people, it doesn't look like they are in favor of this. And it looks like Russian police detained over 700 at an anti-war rally. So really, really nice to see that, you know, maybe there's some pushback within the country itself and that this is just something that Putin wants for his legacy. And if you continue to scroll down here, there's going to be some videos. There's going to be lots of information about the market where the Russian consulate and uh, Germany and then the embassy in Ireland were painted with red to represent blood and then breaking news from from both Russia, both sides of the table and then countries that are willing to accept the civilians that are trying to flee. So lots of information there. I'm going to continue to monitor it throughout the day. Jobless claims retreat in the latest week, painting a picture of a strong labor market. So it's really important to understand that people that have completely divested out of the market may be waiting to re-enter. And that's what we're seeing, that these dips are being bought. Job claims are going down. We still have a strong market. Now, the Fed does have to speak, and I'm not saying that there's not going to be volatility, but these could be really good opportunities to cost average down for you long-term investors that are looking beyond just this year. Now, if we go back to Twitter and we talk about Proterra, they had several announcements in the last week or two. I haven't covered this in quite some time, so I wanted to stop and dedicate a video to Proterra and all of you very faithful Proterra watchers. And you know I've got something good for you. So not only have they been building and restructuring a new team from the CEO to the CFO to board members, I, I don't find anything very concerning here. It looks like the company's getting stronger from the leadership and strategic side. So if I was able to speak to the new board of directors or even the senior executive leadership team, I would say my one critique would be innovation, innovation, innovation. And what do I mean by that? There's four key areas. There's the software. There is the charging infrastructure. There is the bus builds. There is the battery technology. We're not hearing enough about when the next generation is going to come out. Are they getting their engineers together to take the bus build time from 14 to 16 months and to reduce that, to reduce that and the cost? It's a million dollar bus build. So we know that the battery technology is supposed to be updated either this year or next year, but innovation, I don't know that we hear enough about this. So on Thursday, February 17th, this video was released of Gareth Joyce, the new CEO of Proterra doing an interview with Freight Waves. And before Gareth, there was Jack Allen. He was the CEO of Proterra. 
And he had also done an interview with Freight Waves, and the interview was focused on bringing key components of manufacturing onshore. And specifically, they were talking about the agreement with LG and that sell supply through 2028 in manufacturing and securing that in the U.S. Now, what I found interesting through this interview, and these were all softball questions. I mean, these were easy things. Alan did a great job. He was well-researched on the company, but there wasn't anything really tough for Gareth to answer during this interview. They did discuss the present situation with the resin connectors and the harness. And besides that, it sounded like they were still building and looking for opportunities to invest in strategies within the supply chain management and making sure that they can cover the critical components. So invest in those areas of highest risk. It looked like they were still working through where those investments would be, and hopefully they have identified those. But that was the big takeaway of this interview. It's available in the Discord if you missed it. Now, the next thing I want to do is I've always talked about adding value in this channel. And here recently, I signed up for a Moomoo account, and it has this free level two data in it. And I've got in the comments the link for you to get some free shares if you want to sign up. And I just want to show you how incredible this is and how it can help you expedite your research when you're looking at a stock. Now, what is this up here? If you click on these little blue tabs, it takes you directly to the filings in the chart. This level two data is incredible. The position uh, cost distribution is in here. We've got summary, analyst, bid, ask price. We've got key indicators. We've got uh, financial estimates, the earnings per share, revenue. All of this data is in here and you can, fig you can configure this as you wish. And most importantly, look, it's got the news feed directly in here in one table, one place. So be sure to check that out. It's something that I've been using the, the last week and I think it's pretty incredible. So you only have to deposit a dollar and that's available to you. Uh, of course, a hundred dollars if you want to actually do something, $2,000 to get all five stocks. So this is a major step in the right direction. February 14th of 2022, we needed to put in some public charging stations and test the grid starting in Newark, California. The destination was Seattle, Washington, and then returned back to Newark for 1,700 miles. Can we do a motor coach average trip with a bus and 280 miles total projected range between the charges over the course of the trip with some legs projecting well in excess of 300 miles? Now, after doing this, the charge, charge times were shorter than projected, averaging two and a half to three hours as the vehicles never used more than 65% of the available battery on each leg of the trip due to energy density of standard Proterra powered battery packs. So this is what I'm asking myself, could Greyhound or is this realistic to stop for two and a half to three hours uh, every four hours on a trip to charge? I mean, if, if that's doable, I mean, there's obviously an opportunity to speed the charge. So here's another tool that you could use. It's called wellwisdom.com. And down here at the bottom, we've got the Proterra stock price. We've got the funds, number of funds that are holding Proterra. We've got the volume, and you can see those highlighted here as I scroll over them. Now, you can see as the stock prices went down, the number of fund holders has went up, and that's a good sign for long-term investors. You can see back here in 2020, there was only 42 funds that were holding Proterra. Current day, we have over 143. One thing that I like to do is I like to go to Finviz and organize this by the sector and industry and see which plays are the highest gainers when we have this dip and rebound. And consistently what I've been seeing, and I've covered this in videos before, if you've watched any of these Proterra videos, I have seen pure EV plays, not combustion and EV, take the lead when it comes to gains. Now, Proterra had a massive gain today. I mean, there were others that gained even more massively, but I am very happy and very bullish with Proterra and the green candlestick action. Let's just get straight into it. You can see it is looking very healthy in the 30 minute chart. Now it is getting up here to the RSI. So expect a little bit of a pullback, but when this tested down here, 
it was bought up and I expect that this could potentially go on an uptrend leading up to earnings. Now I also think GGPI or future to be Polestar is also one that could go up to $19. I would be on the lookout for that. I still like Lucid. It didn't get low enough for me to want to buy into this. And then obviously Arrival is one that's been on my list. You can see when this one pulls back to the $3 mark, it very quickly goes up to $3.50. That's all I got. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to subscribe to the channel. Give the video a big thumbs up and I'll see you in the next one.